Hello and welcome to Algebra 1, Lesson 51. In this video, we're going to learn about inverse variation. So in our last lesson, we talked about something known as direct variation. And we saw with that we had y varies directly with x if there is some constant k such that we had y is equal to k times x, where again, this k is called the constant, the constant of variation. We talked about a lot of things in that opening lesson. We discussed the fact that in this scenario, if k was positive, so if k was greater than zero, as x increases, y increases, and as x decreases, y decreases. And more specifically, we could say, as x increases by one unit, y increases by k units, or as x decreases by one unit, y decreases by k units, and so on and so forth. Now we're going to talk about another scenario that you're going to encounter in Algebra 1, and that's called inverse variation. So the concept is the same. So we have that y varies inversely with x if there is some constant k such that, and here we have y equals k over x. So again, the k is called the constant, the constant, of variation. Now what's different here is that if k is greater than zero, now as x increases, what's going to happen to y? Well just think about this for a second. If x is in the denominator, if x is getting bigger and bigger, what's happening to y? Well it's getting smaller, right? y is going to decrease. And to think about this, let's think about some money, for example. Let's say the four of us get together and do a job. So let's say we're getting paid $100 for this job, and we divide it by four people. And this amount here tells us how much each person's going to get. In this case, that's 25. Now, if I increase the number of people in the group, let's say I take this up to 5. Okay, so x goes up to 5. What's going to happen to y? Well, it's going to go down. It's going to go to 20. So as I divide by a larger number, I am getting a smaller result. And again, this is when k is a positive value. But the opposite is also true. As x decreases, y increases. Right. So if I take this from 5 to, let's say, 2, now 100 divided by 2 is 50. So that's going to increase. So again, as x goes down, y goes up, and as x goes up, y goes down. So this is the opposite of what we saw with direct variation, where as x went up, y went up, and as x went down, y went down, again, when k is positive. All right, so let's jump in and just look at a typical problem. You solve these problems the same way that you approach them with direct variation. So we have if y varies inversely with x, and y equals 7 when x equals 5, find y when x equals 2. So just write your formula. So y equals k over x. And just plug in with the information they give you. So we have that y equals 7. We have that x equals 5. Now, the shortcut here is to realize that with this generic formula, I can multiply both sides of the equation by x. And what I'm going to have is x, y is equal to k. So that's kind of what most teachers will teach you as a shortcut to say, okay, if I want to find k, it's just equal to x times y. So if I plug in a 7 for y and I plug in a 5 for x, I know that k is 35, right? I know that this will be 35. 35 divided by 5 is, in fact, 7. Okay, so once I know what the value is for k, I can go through and figure out this scenario. Find y when x equals 2. Well, again, I know that k is 35, and x is going to be 2. So I would get 35 halves, which you could write as 17.5 if you wanted to, or you could just keep it in fractional form as 35 halves. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So if q varies inversely with n, and q equals 1 half when n equals 1 fourth, Find Q when N equals 2 thirds. 
So again, this might be the type of problem that really throws you for a loop, right? You see this and you're like, oh, I'm used to working with Y and X. Just think about what you normally get. Normally you get if Y varies inversely with X, right? So we would write our equation to start as Q is equal to K over N. And once I have that set up, I could just plug in and get my answer. Now we know that to find K, we can multiply both sides by N. So I can multiply this by N, multiply this by N, and I could say K is equal to what? N times Q. So in the first scenario, the scenario they give us so that we can find K, we're told that Q is one half. So Q is one half. And we're told that N is one fourth. So N is one fourth. And so one fourth times one half would be one eighth. So K is equal to one eighth. Okay, so now that we know that, we're told to find Q when N equals two thirds. So we have Q is equal to, we'll have one eighth, one eighth divided by two thirds. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna have Q is equal to one eighth times the reciprocal of two thirds, which is three halves. This is gonna be equal to three over 16. So Q in this scenario is gonna be three sixteenths. Okay, let's take a look at a pretty simple word problem that deals with Ohm's law. So this is something that, you know, as an algebra one student, you might've come across this in your science class. You might not have. For sure, by the time you get out of high school, you'll be very familiar with this Ohm's law. So the current in a simple electrical circuit varies inversely with the resistance. If the current is 30 amps when the resistance is 5 ohms, find the current when the resistance is 15 ohms. So pretty simple to solve one of these. I'm just going to give you, let me go down to another sheet of paper. I'm just going to give you the generic notation they use when you talk about Ohm's law. So Ohm's, Ohm's law. So you have the current. Okay, the current, which is represented with I. So this is for the current. Then you have the resistance, which is represented with R. And then you have the voltage. Now, in our word problem, we didn't say anything about voltage, but the voltage is going to be your constant of variation. It's not going to change. So this is my K or my constant of variation and it represents the voltage. Okay, so let's go back up real quick and let's get some numbers going. So it says, first off, the current in a simple electrical circuit varies inversely with the resistance. So current we represented with I, resistance we represented with R. So that means that our formula would look like this. I is equal to some constant over R. Now we already said that the constant would be V, the voltage. So you could put V there, you could put K there. You could really put whatever you want there. It doesn't matter, right? You're just solving for that unknown. So let's put V there to make sure that we're consistent with that formula. All right, so it tells us in the starting scenario, if the current is 30 amps, so this is where my current goes, so this would be a 30. When the resistance is five ohms, so this would be a five. And then we'll stop there, we just wanna find V. We wanna find V, and then apply it to that second scenario they give us. So let's solve for that. So what I would do here, I would multiply. We'd have 30 equals V over five. Multiply both sides of the equation by five, and I would get 150 is equal to V. So that's my voltage. That's going to stay the same. Okay. So now in the next scenario, we want to find the current when the resistance is 15 ohms. Now, the resistance goes up. That means that the current is going to go down, right? It's inverse variation. So we're looking for a smaller value than 30 here, right? So if I plug in, I have I is equal to I know that my voltage, which is V, that's on top, is 150. And they're giving me this 15 for the resistance. 
Pretty easy to do this here. 150 divided by 15 is 10. So I is equal to 10 in this scenario. Because it's a word problem, we probably want to put a nice little sentence there and say that the current is 10 amps when the resistance is 15 ohms. Okay. And one of the things you can notice about this, again, it's inverse variation. So as R increased, it went from 5 to 15, the I or the current decreased. It went from 30 to 10. So that's consistent with what we know about inverse variation. All right. So to kind of wrap up the lesson, we're also going to see inverse variation as a power. So this is no more difficult. It's just plugging things in, figuring out what K is, and then following up with your scenario that they're giving you. So Y varies inversely with the nth power of X if there exists a real number K such that Y equals K, the constant of variation, over X to the nth power. So Y varies inversely with Q squared. So Y is equal to your variable in the place of X as you'd normally get it is now Q. So you just put y equals k over q squared. And then we're given the scenario where y is equal to 4. So y is going to be 4 when q is going to be 5. So we're going to use this to solve for k, and then we can figure out what this guy is. So y is 4 when q is 5. 5 squared is 25, so k over 25. Obviously, k there is 100, right? If I multiply both sides by 25... I'm going to get that k equals 100. So now we want to do this scenario where we find y when q equals 15. So I'd be plugging in a 15 there. So let me erase this real quick. Let's get a little room going. So I know k is 100. So 100 is going to get plugged in there. And q is 15. 15 is going there. And so what I'm going to have is y is equal to 100 over... 15 squared. Now, a lot of you don't know 15 squared is 225 yet, but by the time you finish Algebra 2, you're going to know that for sure. So 15 squared is 225. All right, we can reduce this fraction. So each of these is going to be divisible by 25. 100 divided by 25 is going to be 4. 225 divided by 25 is going to be 9. So this ends up being 4 ninths as my answer. All right, so let's wrap up the lesson by looking at a word problem. So we have that the amount of light measured in foot candles produced by a light source varies inversely with the square of the distance from the source. So let's just label things. I'm going to say that the amount of light measured in foot candles produced by a light source, let's just go ahead and just say that's L. And this varies inversely with the square of the distance from the source. So let's say the distance from the source, let's say that's D, and that's going to be squared. So we'll put D squared down here. And then for my constant of variation, I'm just going to use K, right? Nice and simple. All right, so let's copy this because we're going to need it. Okay, so if the light produced 10 feet from a light source, so that's the distance, so I'm going to plug in a 10 for D there, is 12 foot candles, so this is going to be 12, Find the light produced 20 feet away from the same source. So what we want to do, again, is just plug in this, find K, and then figure out what this second scenario is that they're giving us. So if I plugged in a 12 for L, I'd have 12 is equal to, you'd have K over 10 squared, which is 100. To isolate K, I'd multiply both sides by 100. And so this would cancel with this. And you would get K is equal to 1,200. Now, let me erase all this real quick. And in this second scenario, the one that we need to figure out, it says find the light produced 20 feet away from the same source. So now the distance, the D part, is going to be a 20. So I plug in a 20 there. And I know that K is still 1,200. So this is 1,200. So the L is going to be equal to 1,200 over 20 squared. 
Now, 20 squared is 400, so 400. And I know that I can cancel two zeros with two zeros, right? It's like canceling out a common factor of 100. And then 12 divided by 4 is 3. So the L here, or the light produced, is going to be 3. And in terms of units, it would be 3 foot candles. So let's go ahead and write that the light produced 20 feet away. from the light source is three foot candles.